Americans, we all have a role to play in how we respond to threats. Groups like ISIL cannot defeat us on the battlefield, so they try to terrorize us at home against soft targets, against civilians, against innocent people. Even as we're vigilant, we cannot and we will not succumb to fear. Nor can we allow fear to divide us, for that's how terrorists win. Right. We have to save the dividing uh, for President Obama himself. Joining us now is Deputy Editor of the Wall Street Journal, Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, Fox News contributor, Daniel Henninger. Hello, sir. Hi there, Steve. Happy, quite uh, remarkable. Happy, yeah, it is quite remarkable. Before we get to your great piece, which, which really brings together uh, two things going on in this world, that, uh, and if it weren't for Paris and what's going on and what took place, Missouri and, and the universities and Black Lives Matter would be dominating the news, and you bring those two together. But uh, what was your take on uh, the uh, press conference by Obama and the French president today? Well, uh, I thought uh, Francois Hollande uh, continued to speak forcefully about uh, the threat that we face, whereas the President of the United States stood there. And I have to tell you, Steve, I just thought, uh, including what uh, you just played, he basically is just stringing together one platitude after another. It is the most amazing thing. For instance, he actually said that the forthcoming climate change meeting in Paris will be quote, a rebuke to the terrorists, <laughs> okay? <laughs> you did, I heard it, yeah. He said, he said that the massacres in Paris, quote, remind us that the world is still a dangerous place. <laughs> really? <laughs> it is just um, so otherworldly, uh, to tell you the truth, uh, whereas uh, the, the French president is clearly focused on the substantive material threat uh, that they have just experienced in Paris and you know, uh, Brussels is now in its fourth day of lockdown. Is this the way we're going to live? Uh, it's going to take more than platitudes. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, all right, let, let, let's talk about your piece. And, and I, I just think it's brilliantly done, as usual. And uh, I, I just I couldn't put it down once I started reading it. Not that it's a book, but nonetheless, it's a, it, it just said it uh, all and made so much sense uh, from Missouri to Paris. And you talk about, the, the, you know, how the two really do parallel each other in many respects. Yeah, I uh, was sitting on uh, the weekend of the uh, Paris massacre trying to, uh, after we had just been through a long week of uh, these events on campus, the uh, Missouri, University of Missouri protests that resulted in the president there resigning, and then that incredible shouting match uh, between the student and the uh, administrator at Yale that went viral. Right. And, you know, since it's been one uh, school after another, Princeton, Dartmouth, yep. uh, Claremont McKenna. And I just sat back and I thought, you know, I think the left has something to answer for, both uh, in what is going on uh, on campuses and uh, in national security. I mean, they are both... What we're talking about here are great American institutions. I mean, let's face it, the American college and university system is one of the great institutions created over a couple of hundred years. The national security of the United States is the result of many people working over decades to try to bring us to the point where we have this level of protection. And then along comes the left on campus saying everything you believe in, such as free speech on campus, is wrong and actually saying things like hostile speech is not free speech, uh, just upending the moral order on campus as it existed for centuries, really. And then I thought, you know, the war on terror. Remember the war on terror after 9-11? We passed the Patriot Act. We had a lot of solidarity around that. And then within two years, the Democratic left was attacking it, attacking the interrogations, the surveillance regime, Guantanamo, saying all of this, did not reflect our values or our ideals and that it was actually immoral. And candidate Obama and then President Obama in 2009 agreed with all that, essentially. And uh, they undercut the moral legitimacy of uh, the war on terror. And I concluded by saying that I think the left should be held to account. I mean, they win some of these elections and they win control of these universities and uh, they turn them upside down. And they should be held to account for the consequences in both yeah. cases. No, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And the question is, 
where are we headed? And you got 30 seconds to, to, to write the, uh, <laughs> the, the, uh, the, the, the prologue to that. Well, on the campuses, Steve, uh, I think we're really headed towards intellectual anarchy, uh, unless boards of trustees step in because the presidents are hopeful. And uh, on national security, it just makes the presidential election this year so important. We cannot continue yep. uh, on this course without the United States taking the lead. Yep, we will look for the, uh, the next piece. Maybe that will uh, go in depth on that as well. Have a great Thanksgiving. Uh, uh, we always appreciate you coming on, Daniel. All right, same to you, Steve. Take Good care. To to All right, folks, Give Me Five is next. Don't go away. You're not going to want to miss this one.